Good evening and welcome to my presentation about EMOTOS. Um, EMOTOS is a free operating system, mainly but not only for the Atari 16 and 32-bit machines. And as Carsten has already mentioned, my name is Christian Sietz. I've been an EMOTOS contributor since 2016. And today I've prepared for you uh, some slides and more importantly, also a live demo of our 1.0 release that was already mentioned by Carsten too. And after that, for sure, there will be time for your questions and discussion about EMOTOS. So in order to better understand how EMOTOS came to be, I think it's important to have a look at the history of Atari machines and operating systems, since I guess that many of you know at least parts of it, I will go through it rather quickly. Okay, meanwhile, 35 years ago in 1985, um, Atari released their ST computer with a 68,000 CPU running at 8 megahertz, and the initial model set 512K of RAM. Later models could have more. <clears throat> what made the Atari ST special for its day was its high resolution monochrome mode uh, that made it popular for professional applications such as, for example, desktop publishing or CAD. And of course, no mention of the Atari would be complete without mentioning the MIDI interface, musical instrument digital interface that allows you to connect the ST to things like keyboard synthesizers and the like. And it made it very popular with musicians. Okay, also in 1985, um, of course, Atari had to come up with an operating system for their new, new computer and for their operating system called TOS. They chose to license uh, a graphical user interface called GEM and an underlying operating system called GEMDOS from Digital Research. After the initial joint development, Atari continued developing it independently further, um, which will become again um, important ag uh, again later. So TOS is an operating system that is contained, contained entirely in the ROM of the machine, so no parts of it have to be loaded from a floppy or hard disk. It's conceptually a rather simple operating system uh, being single task, but like you can, as you can see on the screenshot here, it has um, a nice GUI with a desktop metaphor, uh, making it easy to use even for computer novices back in the day. And for those of you who like command line applications better, it also has a text node that it will switch to uh, if required. Okay, continuing through history. In 1989, Atari released the STE computer, which was only a minor upgrade hardware-wise to the ST with a bigger color palette and the ability to play PCM sound. And then in 1990 and 1991, they released the TT and Mega STE computers. Um, these were workstations, as you can see on the picture in the middle, workstations meant more for prof professional users. The Mega STE had a 16 megahertz CPU and an optional FPU and also a VME bus slot for expansion cards. Uh, while the TT was a really powerful workstation for its day with a 68030 CPU, uh, also an FPU, it could handle way more RAM. It had a VME bus upgrade slot as well and an improved high resolution mode. Um, of course, these machines made it necessary to release new versions of the operating system. So Atari made TOS versions two and three for the Mega STE and the TT computers respectively. And then in 1992, Atari built the Falcon computer, their last TOS compatible computer, again with a 68030 CPU, um, a digital signal processor, which is the thing that, that made the Falcon a special because that DSP allowed you to, for example, calculate audio effects in real time and again, made the machine popular with musicians. Um, apart from that, the Falcon also introduced color graphic, uh, true color graphics, sorry, and uh, came with an operating system TOS version 4 that apart from the support for the Falcon hardware also had some other features such as color icons or nicer um, dialogue control elements. 
Shortly after releasing the Falcon, Atari Corporation, the company making the computers, got into financial troubles and they ceased their operation in 1996. However, the, the intellectual property, the IP rights um, for the computers and the software went to the gaming branch of Atari that has been renamed and sold many times since. So it was Hasbro and it was Infograms. And since a few years, there's again a small French company that uses the name Atari. And this is important because it means that Atari TOS is still copyrighted. So you cannot legally distribute a TOS ROM image even today. On the other hand, um, Digital Research not only licensed um, GEM to Atari, but they also developed it themselves into a version for PCs. And this PC gem was open sourced under the GPL um, by Caldera in 1999. Obviously, it shares the common ancestry, both coming from the gem development at Digital Research, but they di diverged significantly. Um, for example, uh, Digital Research was sued by Apple, and they had to change several things with respect to the look and feel of gem but Atari was not affected by that lawsuit. Okay, and then finally we come to the start of the Imutos development, which was in the year 2001. And uh, Imutos was born out of, of the necessity to be able to bundle a legal ROM image with emulators, hence also its name. Like I've mentioned before, Atari TOS cannot be legally distributed. And therefore the first Imutos developers I took the PC gem source code as a starting point. Um, <clears throat> however, of course, the PC gem does not contain any things that are specific to the hardware, uh, to the hardware of the Atari. So all the low level stuff um, uh, to talk to the Atari hardware was fully developed by Emotos developers. And of course, a lot of years have passed since then, and many improvements have been made. And so we come to the current year, as it was already mentioned in the introduction, a few weeks ago, beginning of September, we could celebrate big time because after 19 years of development, uh, we released version 1.0 of Emutos. So you might ask what makes Emutos special compared to Atari TOS? And I've listed some points here. Um, <clears throat> one thing, for example, is its support for computers. Of course, Emutos supports all Atari computers, albeit the Falcon with some limitations. Um, but Emutos not only runs on Atari machines, but also on some non-Atari machines. You might have seen the presentation last month where Emutos was demoed on an Amiga. And also Emutos has been ported to some homebrew computers or cold fire evaluation boards, for example. Also, owing to its history, Emotos is a great system to use together with emulators. Um, for example, there's a very fast Atari emulator called Aranim, and Emotos has a special API to talk to Aranim and make uh, some features from the host side available on the Atari side as well. Emotos is provided in many variants. So on the one hand, ROM images for emulators or to burn into ROMs and to put into your actual computers. But for users who want to try them out, try it out themselves without modifying their hardware, we also have several versions that run entirely in RAM and can therefore easily be tested. Uh, also, we are happy to have a very committed team of translators uh, for Emotos, mean, meaning that we can offer Emotos in about a dozen different languages. However, what makes Emotos most special, at least for me, is its built-in hard disk driver. Um, you have to know that Atari TOS does not have, um, sorry, Atari, uh, Atari TOS does not have a built-in hard disk driver, meaning that if you want to use your Atari with a hard disk, or a modern hard disk replacement, you have to use extra software to do so. 
while with Emotos, the hard disk driver is built in into the operating system, and also Emotos has much better support for party, uh, PC partitions and FAT16 file systems than Atari TOS da, uh, does. Um, this makes it great for exchanging data with a PC. For example, if you have a compact flash card, uh, you can simply swap that card between the machines to copy data. Another feature that is not in Atari TOS and therefore unique to Emotos is its built-in command line interface. Great if you use many text mode applications like developers often do. And I will also show that you that Emocon during the live demo. Um, then, since Emotos is open source and can therefore easily be adapted to um, suit one's needs, during all the years of development, we have had many contributions where people added support for third-party hardware. A third-party hardware that is that needs extra drivers again to, to be used with Atari TOS, but, but with Emotos, it is supported out of the box. Uh, this applies, for example, to certain RAM upgrades or graphic cards. And last, but in no means least, Emotos is free software, meaning, like I said, it can be easily um, adapted to your needs. It can be ported to, to other computers and, um, of course, freely distributed. OK, now I've been talking for quite some while here about my slides. So I think it's time for the live demo of our release 1.0. Just give me a second. I will show it to you in an emulator because it's easier to show uh, or to share my screen this way. So I will start Atari as an emulator. And as soon as I'm switched Jitsi here, we should be able to see that. OK, I can see that I'm now sharing uh, the Atari uh, screen. I will just reboot so you can see it all from the beginning. So this is our startup screen. Normally, it would go away much faster, but I am just holding the Shift key here so that you can see the screen. Um, so this is what the user first gets to see of Emotos, a short startup screen that um, summarizes the hardware and that, that has been detected. So the amount of memory and the drives. Um, OK, so I will release Shift now. And then you we will be back into the Emotos desktop, as you can see. So um, we try to, or, or uh, with release 1.0, um, we have the same features like uh, the TOS 3 desktop has. So to anyone that is familiar with Atari TOS, they should recognize the things shown here. So we have um, drive icons. We have folder contents in, in form of icons. Uh, we can also place shortcuts to some applications on the desktop. And of course, we can use the mouse to either select files or to copy files somewhere, so everything that you expect from such a graphical user interface. Or you can delete files by dro dropping them into the trash bin, things like that. Um, also, like Atari TOS has, um, there is a built-in text viewer in Emotos. So if I double click on any text file, it asks me what I want to do with it, and I can show it. And um, it will also be displayed, by the way, screen page by screen page. So it's, if it's a longer file, uh, you can easily read it that way. Um, for other file types, there are no built-in viewers in Emotos, but you can register um, uh, file name endings uh, for certain applications. For example, while setting up this demo, I already registered here JPEG files with a, an appropriate viewer. So if I double click that from the desktop, then the viewer will launch and will show my JPEG file. And the same I could, of course, do with, uh, I don't know, word processing documents and the like with, with everything that I want. 
Okay. Um, what else to show yet? Yeah. So I've mentioned during my slides that Atari TOS and also Emo TOS are single tasking operating systems. How, however, there's a very limited support for multitasking in TOS in form of so-called desk accessories. These are available here by the, in, in the um, desk menu. And as you can see, for example, this is a calculator um, that at boot time is loaded here from, from this file, from this accessory file, and I can use it in parallel with my desktop. So there were many like little utilities, um, text editors, calculators, calendars, things like that, that you can use not only here on the Emu, uh, on the Emutos desktop, but with every gem application that has a similar menu structure, you will also have access to these accessories. Um, yeah, maybe it's also worth mentioning that this is, uh, yeah, maybe a bit specific to to Emotos and not, um, yeah, yeah not, not really. It's also Partly, it's also available in Atari TOS, but anyway, you can you can um, adapt the look and feel of Emotos to your likings to a certain degree, um, because Emotos, while it has, built, of course, built-in icons and mouse cursors, it can also load these from your boot drive, meaning that if you like cert a certain icon set more or you want to have um, other mouse cursors, you can you can load them from the disk, and we provide uh, a few options uh, for you in uh, in the Emotos downloads. But of course, you are free to use a resource file editor. So this extension here, RSC, is a common file format on the Atari for resource files. You can also use a resource file editor to um, yeah make your own designs. Okay, this is a short tour of the desktop of Emotos. As, as I've said, um, it has the same functionality more or less than uh, uh, Atari TOS 3.0. So you can say, see that I can adapt, for example, how the files are shown and I can um, yeah, do certain things like, for example, register the applications as I've mentioned. But one thing that is indeed unique to Emotos and not built in into Atari TOS it's, is its command line interface, Emocon. And I will launch that now so that you can see it as well. Yeah, so here it is. Looks a little bit like the MS-DOS prompt. And if I show you the built-in commands, you can see that it has many of the common commands that you would expect from a shell. Maybe one important thing to notice here is that um, Emocon is um, explicitly not make it, make, made for things like scripting and so on. So you will not find any con control structures such as if and for. Uh, this is simply because we want to or we need to keep uh, Emocon lean in order to be able to include it into the ROM. Uh, but to work interactively with it, it's a really nice shell. For example, like um, many or like any any good shell should have, it has tab completion. So I can uh, just enter some letters and then uh, type the tabulator key to have Emotos completed. And then, for example, I could run this uh, command line compiler here. Also, like any good shell has, I can uh, redirect output. Um, so if I just, for example, wanted to save here the, the compiler options, I could redirect it to a text file and view it later. Yeah, so you see, um, Emotos has some interesting features to offer and I think also a nice and feature rich user interface. And um, yeah, maybe one final thing I can show you here. Uh, this is specific to the Emotos 512 kilobyte ROM that I'm using here because I'm running on an emulated TT as you might have seen. Uh, but our 512K ROM is 
multilingual, meaning that I can use here um, a configuration tool that stores the my preferred language into non-volatile RAM. So on real hardware, this would, would be a, um, something like a, like a Dallas or ST non-volatile RAM. Of course, here in the emulator is also emulated. But anyway, I can um, set my preferences here. And then if I reboot Emutos, you will see after a while here that it comes up in German now. But like I said, this is important to know um, the, this multilingual feature is one of the things that for space reasons we only have in the 512k ROMs. Um, smaller ROMs, for example, the 256k ROMs are provided individually for each language. So I said before, we have about a dozen languages and therefore we have about a dozen uh, 256k ROMs available for download for you. Okay, I think this and conclude my live demo. I will go back to the slide set. So you will for sure ask, what does the future bring for Emotos? Um, since we've only have released the 1.0 version a few weeks ago, we didn't have time to make really the conclusive list of the next steps to do or that we want to do, but some things are already clear right now. For example, I mentioned that the Falcon support is still a little bit lacking. Um, in particular, the functions with respect to the digital signal processor and for true color video modes are missing. And these functions, uh, we definitely want to include in a future release. We've also seen increasing interest in Emotos from the Amiga side. And as you've seen during last month's demo, it still has some rough edges. For example, it only displays correctly on PAL machines and so on. So if there's this much of interest, then for sure we also will improve Amiga support. Also, you might know that Emotos also runs on the Vampire 4 standalone board. And there we've had a contribution uh, by someone that would add native Atari video modes for this Vampire 4 standalone. Uh, this contribution is still in its very early stages, so it needs some work uh, before it, then it can be included into mainline Emotos. But still, this might be something that we could see in the future. And then we have many more smaller ideas to countless to put them here on a list. And going a little bit away from the technical or from the coding points, I'm often asked by, especially by first time users, well, where's your handbook? As you will see when we go through the Git repo structure, uh, we have a documentation folder with quite some documents, also quite some detailed documentation. Uh, but I think new users are sometimes missing a concise handbook with images and so forth that uh, helps them with the first steps. Um, and since writing handbooks, writing technical documentation is something that requires a different set of skills than coding, uh, I think this is very much um, a part where we want to have some volunteers. Okay, so maybe I've made you curious and you want to participate in Emotos development or uh, you just want to have a look. Um, I have some links here for you. For sure, we can. I can arrange with Carsten to share my slides after the talk so that you can explore those links um, in your own time. Um, we have, of course, a project website and a Facebook page. But for those of you here that are developers, probably the most interesting is our source code. Uh, Emotos is hosted on GitHub. And it is written mostly in C for portability reasons uh, with only 68K assembler where it is absolutely needed.
we cross compile Emotos uh, with GCC. Vincent River has made um, a version of GCC that is our official compiler for Emotos. And however, if you just want to try out um, the latest features, you do not have to set up a build environment for yourself because we use Travis CI, continuous integration uh, for automated builds, meaning that every time a developer checks something into GitHub, into our repo, um, a new snapshot is built, a new binary snapshot is built and made available for download. And then finally, we have our mailing list here. The mailing list is the main point for discussion. Uh, that's where we discuss, for example, bug reports and, and their analysis, or we discuss generally about the project ideas, further steps, and so on. And I also would like to add that the mailing list is also our preferred way of submission of code contributions. Um, we're maybe a little bit old school there, uh, perhaps fitting to a retro project um, in the way that we like source code contributions to be submitted as a patch uh, to the list for discussion and review. Okay, and then we are already at my final slide today. Um, I just want to give you a brief look into the top level folder structure of our Git repo. And in order to understand that, you first have to understand the layers that TOS, be it Atari TOS or EmoTOS, is made of. Uh, so directly talking to the hardware, we have a layer called BIOS and XBIOS. And on top of that, the not directly hardware dependent um, operating system functions, such as memory, file system management, process management, they are handled by um, a layer called GEMDOS. The graphical user interface is called a GEM as mentioned before, and it is subdivided into layers again. So the low level stuff, things like drawing lines, rectangles, and so on, is in a layer called VDI, um, whereas more high level stuff, such as handling windows or drawing menus, is um, in a layer called AES. And basically running as an application in GEM, but still contained in our ROM, is the desktop, that's the user interface that you've seen during my short demo. And then if you have a look at the um, structure here, you will easily recognize the layers. So this is the BIOS and X BIOS. Our GEMDOS is called BDOS. We have AES, we have the VDI. Um, we have the command line interface, the desktop and so forth. And it's organized in that way because we in Emotos want to have clean code. So we have everything in its respective layer, and we only want to use um, yeah, really defined interfaces between those layers to, to minimize uh, cross yeah, issue, issues uh, uh, between these layers, sorry. Okay, and with that, I'm already at the end of the talk that I prepared, but of course, I'm now open for your questions, for discussion, for ideas, for anything. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian. Uh, that was great. Um, I already have some questions, and while everyone else is thinking about questions, I, I fire my first one. Um, how much space does um, does Emotos take compared to the original Atari TOS? Because it seems to be more advanced and has some more features. Is it then bigger or? So with space, you mean code space in ROM, right? Yes, yes. Um, so like I said, we have different sets of ROMs with slightly different functionality. So indeed in the smallest set of ROMs, with which are 192K ROMs that are made for, um, or, or that are uh, for, for the original ST computers without any hardware modifications, they only have 192K of ROM. Uh, there indeed um, some features that you, you've seen during the demo are missing, 
uh, simply because they do not fit into code space. So the, these ROMs are full, uh, more or less, but then starting with the 256K ROMs, um, we have the feature set that you've seen during the demo with the exception, more or less, of the multilinguality, like I mentioned. Um, so indeed, we, we have the... Um, uh, we have the great advantage to have a modern compiler or reasonably modern because the GCC version we use is not the newest one, but still a more, much more modern compiler that Atari had back in its days and that helps with optimizing a lot. So um, Imutos is, comp uh, is compiled with size optimization and that way we managed to cram quite a lot of features into, into even the, the 256K ROMs. But but we have a question um, whether I mentioned the soft load option. Uh, I think with soft load you you mean um, loading, for example, a, a program file, right? Or loading uh, emotors from from disk. Yeah, or or from from floppy disk. This is uh, correct. So um, for people who don't do not want or do not have the ability to to burn ROMs and still want to run it on real hardware or maybe just want to try it before doing any changes to their hardware. We have um, uh, two different options. One, one is a floppy disk image um, that you can, can put on in the Atari at boot time and Emotos will then boot uh, from the floppy disk. And the, in, in my opinion, even more comfortable option is, um, is a program file. So it's a, it's a file like any other TOS program um, that you can copy to your Atari by whatever means. And then under Atari TOS, you double click it on the desktop, it starts and it replaces um, Atari TOS, but only in RAM with Emo TOS. And therefore it's a very easy way to, to try it out. Of course, it will consume some of the RAM because the code uh, of Emo TOS is then running from RAM, uh, but, but otherwise it's a fully featured Emo TOS uh, that is great for testing. So then there was another question in the chat. What would it ha have to uh, what would it take to have the hard disk driver available outside of um, Emotos? Um, I think the driver and the file system support are quite entangled without uh, with, with Emotos, so it's not not that easily extractable to um, to a standalone program. Uh, on the other hand, we had um, uh, an idea a, a while ago that I will try to pursue th that basically is using Emotos as a hard disk driver. So a third option for soft loading. Um, I mentioned before that Atari TOS does not have a hard disk driver, um, but it has the ability to load basically the root sector, so something like the master root record on a PC from a hard disk and execute that. And if we were to load, uh, to, to write a loader um, for that master root record, then we could um, load an Emotos or then, then Atari TOS would boot an Emotos from hard disk. And that, of course, not only gives you the hard disk driver, um, but also all the other improvements uh, of Emotos. I, I hope this, sorry, yeah. Question, David, uh, I hope you can hear me okay. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, uh, what would you say would be the long-term prospects of including perhaps some kind of cooperative multitasking in the uh, 512K version? Mm. Yeah, how, sh how should I put it? Um, the... the... Uh, there is a multitasking operating system, also a free operating system um, for the Ataris, for the higher end Ataris, uh, called Freewind. And um, that can, of course, run on top of uh, Emotos. So I would rather say, instead of us trying to replicate here the, the multitasking abilities, um, yeah, we um, we would rather propose to to um, to run then the mint kernel on Emotos. Okay, so 
Another question that I see in the chat from Matthias um, asking whether we would integrate a, a set up a partitioning program for hard disk. I um, don't think that we would be able to fit this into ROM, uh, but we have been discussing the idea of like a utilities disk for Emotos. Um, and there I could see something like that, although um, of course, a, a hard disk partitioner is, is, is quite a bit of work and nobody has started on it yet. So it's nothing that, uh, Matthias, I can promise to you right now. Uh, but, but at least we have discussed this, um, this idea of providing uh, some extra utilities with Emotos. Then, then there is uh, questions are scrolling about very fast. There's a question about compatibility with ST software that there already has been an answer. So we have in, in our documentation, a list of programs that are known to be incompatible. I will try if I can share that. Just give me a second. Um, Okay, so now you should be able to see our GitHub repo. Um, there is some software that is known to be incompatible with um, uh, with Emotos, in particular if it messes with like undocumented variables in in Atari TOS, because these of course will not be at the same memory location or even exist at all uh, in in Emotos. Um, however. Many of these programs that mess with undocumented variables also crash with later versions of Atari TOS. So it's our opinion that they are then uh, not written cleanly and therefore we cannot support them. So it's documented what we found and maybe also to, uh, interesting, even though it is in German, the um, print magazine Atari, uh, sorry, ST computer, um, recently, with our version 0.9.12, did um, a compatibility check. And like I said, the article is in German, but still when we scroll here, so, so uh, they tested really a lot of programs, games, demos from different categories. And everything that is listed here is Lauffähig, that means um, that it runs under Emotos. So you can see a long list of things that run under Emotos. Um, <clears throat> there are a few programs that were noted here as not compatible back then. And I would say that maybe half of them uh, we fixed for 1.0. So the compatibility is really high. There was a question about um, Amiga support. There, I'm not 100% qualified to to answer because myself, I do not have that much of um, experience with the Amiga. So Emotos right now can already run on the Amiga, either from booted from a floppy disk or also from ROM. Um, like I mentioned, there are some limitations right now, for example, regarding video modes, and I think also. Uh, Floppy disk code is read only. Um, yeah, for that, maybe I have to direct you to, um, to, to, to our documentation on Amiga because I, for that part, I do not know the specific, all the specifics. Okay, I think hopefully I don't have missed any. Yeah, you missed one question okay. that I uh, sent in the chat, uh, but it was a more general question to the whole audience. Uh, you, you talked about the handbook or the missing handbook. And my question was, is there in the, in the Atari community some old book from back in the days that made available under a, a free license by the author? Uh, that could be used as a starting point to write um, uh, a handbook for 
for the uh, for the yeah. for emotors. Yeah, so um, some people of you might know the Atari Document Archive, or commonly referred as DevDocs. While there are many scanned books here, I'm not sure that or which ones of them are really under a free license and which ones are uh, just there because the publisher does not exist anymore and therefore cannot complain. Um, I, I know that some books were authorized uh, for, for distribution by the former publisher, but unfortunately none of them is like a beginner's handbook to toss. So maybe someone else does uh, um, uh, does know something. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If if nothing exists, then um, a fresh start could be done. But that's more work than having having something old to to re just refresh. Yeah, I I, I I totally agree. And like I said. Um, uh, technical writing is also um, yeah, quite a skill that has to be learned to write really good handbooks, especially when you are addressing maybe people new to something. Uh, yeah. Therefore, like, like, like mentioned, um, while I'm often asked, uh, ask, uh, I'm often being asked for a handbook, it's nothing that will come around in the immediate future, unfortunately. But still, it would be great to have. Thank you, everyone, for, for your interest and great questions. And yeah. Yes, thank you very much, Christian. That was very, very nice and very good. I learned a lot.